tonight we are going a little bit outside the box and uh, we're gonna do kind of a hybrid two ply uh, and basically what I've done here we're starting out with this is a nanotube a pro nanotube that I've taken a razor blade and they've got these little nubbin nubbin stoppers on them you see the difference there the, the top one's got that little stopper and basically just took a uh, an exacto knife and gone around and cut that off it doesn't take long at all you just whack that thing off so it's flat I mean that's you know this thing's like already done it doesn't take long um, and so where it's like flat like this and so we don't have that little nubbin and we're gonna make a fly with two beads and then this one will be removable so you can uh, adjust weight so uh, first off we're going to put our bead on and I'm gonna put it on so I'm gonna go hook guide flexi bead nanotube And I'm going to put a little thread wrap on. And the concave end on the flexi bead is going this way. So this is the opened end. No, I, I think my dog, I don't know if you can hear her, but I think her toy is stuck under the couch. Um, so we're going to throw a little dubbing hot spot in here and not a ton. Something like that. And wrap your thread up. The reason we're doing this is when we do take off the bead, and I'll show you how to do that, we still have a hot spot. So I'm going to slide the bead up, and that's going to cover that now. And then I can slide my hook guide on. Alright, so there we go. So that's our rear bead. And you can you know, tell you, I mean, this is going to be a pretty, like, bare-bones intruder. What I'm trying to do is just get it real sparse. So, basically, when you're in a position where you've got to kind of plummet this thing down, like, in between big rocks and, um, you know, like, dig it into structure and big rocks and stuff like that, uh, and you've got to kind of dip it in fast, uh, this is going to be, like, double basically double the weight you know but um, if you're fishing but it's not just limited to that so if you're fishing shallower like insides or whatever and you don't want all the weight this is removable so uh, I'm gonna run some Arctic Fox here in the back and I'm just rolling like blue and purples and stuff because I want I want the beads on this one to stick out I mean they don't have to be like a hot you know like popping out or whatever but I do You'll see when it gets done, it looks pretty good. So, wrap a dubbing loop, dubbing spinner. I'm gonna throw our Arctic Fox and I thin that out just a little bit. Pop it in. Like so. And spin her up. Like that. And then wrap her on. Duchess, stop. Gosh. OK. 
Okay, wrap it up. Okay, we've got our little aft. I'm going to give it just kind of a push just to kind of get it sloped back a little bit. Um, and now for ostrich and all that, I mean, we've all, you know, you've seen me do this a million times, but I'm going to uh, spin up some ostrich in here, but I'm not going to run it in the, like in a composite loop. Um, I'm just going to run it as is and I'm going to do, you'll see, I'm going to do kind of like a little halo thing with some flash. So dubbing loop, ostrich hurl. Clip some off. Find kind of our range here. And you can make these tails kind of as long as you want. I'm going to run it back to about there. Clip our butts here. spin move it all back and wrap it in these back and we can whack these tips up a little bit move my thread back just a little bit can I get these a little wet and once they dry they'll, they'll lay kind of how we want them a little more and then you can, like on this, I'll probably, I'm going to add just a couple, like, of the deep claret, just because I like the color variegation on either side, and I'm going to run it just a tad bit longer. Then our blue ostrich, just a little bit, well, let's see, pull it out just a little, like something like that. Just for no other reason than I just like the color breakup and I like blue and purple together a lot. Or blue and so the clarets and claret just seems to be a really kind of underutilized color in our world. Seems like if it's not blue and black these days nobody's interested but um, I, know, I, dig the, I dig the clarets. Alright, so we're going to tie that in. And now, if I can find it, I'm going to add some pheasant rump and just a couple turns. I like the uh, silver pheasant's cool and it adds like a lot of good contrast. Um, I do also like just the kind of the spikiness of pheasant rump. It's 
just it's like the I don't know I like like the spininess of it and it doesn't add much at all um, as far as just material bulk it's you, you know it's goes on real sparse and it just adds a ton of filler you know if you will um, all right so there's that now this Creelix flash I'm gonna take one side of the hank here add a dubbing loop Take one side of the hank, put it in the dubbing loop. Spread it out. I put it in like 50-50 and we'll trim it down after it's in. And I'm going to spread these out pretty sparse. Just gonna slowly spin it. It's okay if it gets all kerjumbled. We just want it in there locked in right now. See, that's a mess, but we can come in with our bodkin and clear it out. But if you come and clear it out before it's locked into the thread, it's just gonna fall right out. So you can come back later and get it cleaned up. It's important though just to get it tight in the thread at first. And then you can come back and clean it up and pull them all out. And the Creelex is like a multi-laminate kind of flash. So as it separates, it just keeps getting, it's got like multi-layers like the, the flash. And so it, it retains color no matter what depth it is. It's actually really cool stuff. Alright, so now we're just going to wrap this on. And run our thread up. there and then now we can check our length with the Creelix this is actually it turned out like perfect so I'm not even gonna touch it but this is kind of veils veils it in flash <sighs> looks really cool um, and it kind of I like that kind of like flashy halo effect this thing is gonna pretty much just be tied in the round since the way this fly is constructed there's there's not I mean you could throw like a fin raccoon or a fox wing on it but this one's kind of just tied more in the round style so it can be any which way you know in the in the in the water and it's going to look the same uh, i'm going to add a little bit more thread base here and i'll show you exactly why well a i want to even this up and try to get it as even as possible but b meaning i don't want this big step down i want to kind of smooth this out um, and B, I'm using some Mirage Tinsel, and I'll show you the stuff. I mean, it looks like it's not transparent, but it is. Um, it's really sweet. I'll show you here in just a sec. So I'm going to take some Mirage Tinsel. I'm going to tie it in. We're going to wrap back. try not to do that I think this flash I'm gonna have to get this wet again just because I'm gonna end up catching it every time okay wrap back it's 
thing. I didn't want to have that step on there, and that's why I'm going to pinch it, bring it forward. And when you get short, I'm just going to make a wrap, hold it with my finger, grab it, come back, do a wrap, hold it with my finger. Because at this point, if this thing unravels, it just sucks. you got to redo the whole thing. So we're try to get it to where it just doesn't implode on you. Okay. Tie her off. And now's a good time. I'm going to just take a little bit of UV cure. And just kind of run it around. And you'll see why I'm using fluorescent thread underneath it. There, you can see it glow red. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera, but in real life, the thing is just like neon red. Um, and that's the thread coming through the bottom of the um, Mirage. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of blue steely ice dub, make a little dubbing bump here, and that's basically going to hold the next bead, which will be a permanent bead. This one, this bead's not going anywhere. So add our little dubbing bump, I'm going to do just a four turn bit finish, grab our bead, and then you see the open side I'm putting back, and that, that'll hide the dubbing bump, it'll go over that. Um, normally I would zap a gap this thread here, but I haven't got it yet um, I'm out it all dried up and it's been hard enough to get these days at the shop that I have I've like I don't know I feel kind of guilty about taking it from you guys so I've got other ways of getting stuff done so uh, I'm just gonna throw a little head cement on there I'm gonna pop this bead over the dubbing bump and that's that tie our thread on again Another dubbing loop. And there it is, dubbing spinner. Eric Fox once again. Notice a trend with all these intruders. The front's going to be just a bit more elaborate, though. Clean it up, comb it through. Go roughly the body length here. Give her a trim, spread her out. Spin her up. Might go a little longer. Okay, give it a wrap. Yay. Okay, looks good. 
Now, I'm going to do a little composite loop, um, but it's just going to be ice dub, the blue steely, and ostrich. Just two materials. And I don't have both cameras set up, so you'll have to bear with me while I do this. Um, but we've got a video on how to do all the composite loops on our website, uh, on our YouTube channel. So if you're confused about what I'm doing right now, you can refer to that. It's pretty, it's long, but I think it's cool. So measure this out. Give it a cut. Some wet, get it out of our way. Dubbing loop again, common theme here. Okay, ice dub and ostrich roll mixed together. Pop it in, and I so you can see I cut this ostrich pretty long. On, I wish it was on purpose, but it wasn't. So we're kind of check our length here. I don't want these stems like stupid long like that, but we will check our length here. Pull it out. I'm just going to go up here and just whack them. I'm going to end up cutting this ice dub. Um, you know, is what it is. It's not ideal to cut all that ice dub, but um, there's really no way to get in there and cut these ostrich stems back to a manageable length without just ruining the whole loop, so we'll sacrifice a little dubbing. Uh, you know, it's just dubbing. It'll be fine. Give her a spin. And the reason I added the ice dub anyway is just to add kind of a measure of depth. Um, when you have these composite loops and they're all put together, I mean, that, that's, I mean, I don't even know, maybe that's not even a composite loop with just two materials, but when you have multiple materials spun together like that, it adds just this layer of translucency and depth that is hard to achieve when you're tying things in singularly, singularly. Um, and I just, I don't know, I'm a big fan of that effect. And just kind of that, that depth of, of color and that depth range of flash. All right, I'm going to take our finger brush, comb her out. I could add water to this. I actually might add some water to that just to get it tamed a little bit. So pinch it. When you add the water, pinch it and then just kind of move it back and that kind of keeps it all at bay. Give her a tie off. I'm going to go back and kind of rough it up again with this finger brush. Get her all set how we want. And now I'm going to add some more claret. This time I'm going to add a little bit more. 
And these ones I'm just going to place around. So I'll do like three on the sides. And you can make it kind of as long as you want. I'm going to go again just a hair longer than our blue. try really hard to keep everything all my thread wraps just stacked up on top of each other all I did just now is just move like flip the tube over Okay, let's go through and cut these real close. And then what you can do here is if you've got ostrich little stems that you can't get with your scissors just take a little razor blade and just give it a little pop and you can get them out that way just be careful not to press too hard and cut through your tube That'd be a bad deal right now, at this stage. But you can just kind of roll them out. Okay. Something like that. Now, uh, I had, looks like I still have some black marabou. I'm not going to do a ton, just a couple little wraps. cool and for the collar I'm going to use a hen so I've got these these hen necks here I've had it forever but you can also use the uh, the base of a schloppen feather where it's all webby and marabou -y. Uh, and I'm just going to use this kind of real webby fluffy stuff here like I say, the base of, uh, if you find one of the longer schloppen feathers, um, use that. Um, these hen necks, you know, you can get them around. It's obviously a lot harder right now than it was 
uh, a few months ago, but uh, they're they're around a little bit here and there. Tight end tip first. Run my scissors down the top. That kind of kinks those feathers backwards so it's easier to get them all running the same direction when we go to wrap. tie off <sighs> all right and then we're almost done here I'm gonna create a real tight dubbing loop Crelix flash again. The reason I'm doing it the very end is because I don't want it to get kind of bogged down, you know, with the marabou and stuff. I want it to be up as much as possible. Split it in here, 50 50 ish. Push it up. Even it out. Give it a spin to just tighten her up. Come through and pick it out. And you'll trap some of these little black And fluff there, that's fine. And the reason we're doing this in a dubbing loop is to keep this head as small as possible. If we were to come through and lay him in there and tie him down, this head would get real big real fast. And so by putting this in a dubbing loop, it allows us to keep this thing just as minuscule as possible. And we're going to run it tight, as tight as we can, off of this thread. To make sure everything stays um, bound as close to the thread as possible because that will affect your overall head size. Which it's not a, like a huge thing or whatever, but um, trying to get your heads, you know, down manageable is. Uh, you know, it's it's an acquired skill, right, in fly tying, and um, it's kind of the sign of a quality fly, if you will, and it's just something I would encourage people to just kind of practice trying to get that head size down, um, because, you know, aesthetically, it's just a nicer looking fly, and usually, if you're really pumped with the fly, then that's, you know, you want to fish it, right, and we don't want to tie a whole bunch of flies that we don't like, so... Um, couple long ones I'll trim down <laughs> but um, you know you want to you want to try to tie flies that you dig right that way you fish them and it's not like this total waste of time and so last if you got some jungle cock you can throw it on the fake stuff looks real cool too um, I've got a little bit left of a real one so I'm gonna finish that out just throw it on either side here
Give her a whip finish. Pop it out of the tube. Cut the tube. Hold it vertical and lightly make round motions. Try not to close up that hole. We can do we can do UV. We might as well just do UV. Throw some UV on a bobbin botkin rather. Spread it around. Hit it with the torch. I lost my torch. Where's my torch? All right, so here's our fly. And the deal with this thing is right now you can see there's not I mean there's not much to it it's gonna sink like a rock right there's I mean it's real sparse you can see through the thing lots of movement does everything it needs to do as far as you know a cold weather steelhead fly or even like a spring fly or whatever right does it move thing does all that right now it's really dense it's really heavy uh, so when we're dipping in buckets and we need something to get down real fast um, it's ready to go with that. Now, if we're fishing shallower water, all you have to do is take off the hook guide, pull off the bead, and we still got, that's what we did our little hot spot, right? We still got a hot spot, and we can just stick our hook guide back on. And now you've got a fly with half the weight. Um, that's still gonna you know sink good and stuff but it's it's literally got half the weight and so you can fish shallower water um, so if you're getting hung up or whatever and you don't really want to change tips you can you know take off the rear bead and get your fly you know half the weight and then you know if you go back and decide you want uh, you want to get deeper just pop the bead back on And then you're back running, running deep. So the way, the only way to do that with uh, the pro system is just to razor blade off that little, that little bump on these nanotubes. You can do it with medium tubing. Um, I've done it with the with the medium classic, which is this stuff here. It's just straight tubing. Uh, the only thing is the hook guides are really the best solution. Um, the, the pro hook guides being silicone and they, they, they'll dig into the tubing uh, and they won't slip off. That's regardless of whatever system you use, like these are the best solutions. So what you want to do if you use the classic is cut it at a 45 like this, and then you can slide it in um, a piece of junction tubing. So with this 45, you can weasel it in there like that. So you could tie your fly on the classic tubing and then cut it at a 45, you know, and then tie it the same way or whatever. Um, so that's another way to do it. Um, I'd like the nano tube because uh, it's a little stiffer tube, uh, and you know you may have to on this on this um, classic tubing since we're not. This won't hold. This won't stop a, 
a maximum of 10 or 12 pound, right? It's the opening's too big. So what you're going to have to do is take some gel spun. And this is fine too. The, the reason, the only reason I bring up the classic tubing is because it's a hell of a lot cheaper to do it this way, you know, in the long run, because you're not, um, these are way cheap, but you get a ton of, tu you know, ton of tubing material. But push it up and on the step down here so it doesn't roll, but we're tapered. So this is bigger than that. So where it's small, you want to tie in some gel spun and crank this puppy down and squash it. You see how it's pinching that? Gosh, this stuff, it all separated on me. But anyway, you can see how it's pinching that. Can you see that on camera? I can't focus, but I'm pretty sure you can see this just squashed this tubing. This tubing is really flexible. So we just squashed it. And so now that is going to be where the knot butts into the tubing. So if you're tying a loop knot, it can't go any further than this, right? We've created a pinch point and then you can Catch your 45 degree off of that. And then run your hook guide. You know, and your knot will stop there. So you could even like tie your, uh, you could tie your like dubbing bump or whatever, like right there and have your bead a little bit further back. You know what I mean? But uh, you will want this pinched down and the best thread to do it with is gel spun because uh, it won't break. But you can, I mean, I can still, there's still air going through here, right? You can still get a piece of mono through here. It won't collapse it all the way. Um, and that's the cool stuff about this Pro is you can uh, you can cinch it down, but like whenever you're done, and this is like a good diameter, but whenever you're done cinching it down, that's kind of where it stops, right? It won't close up entirely, um, which is good. So anyway, that's the other way to do it. But um, uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.